All right, everybody, here we are at uh, the famous town of Red Lodge, Montana. And, uh, and so, Jen, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us uh, what, what we're up to today? Thanks, Bruce. I'm Jenny with Greater Yellowstone Coalition, and we're headed up to the Beartooth Plateau, which is a great winter area for both snowmobiling and backcountry skiing although those seasons tend to not cross over too much, except for in the spring. The Shoshone National Forest is underway on a travel management plan, and that plan requires the forest to establish winter snowmobile over snow use areas. And the Beartooth Plateau is of particular interest because there's also wilderness up there that's already designated and then a wilderness study area. Yeah, so it's pretty bumpy today, Jen. Apologies for that. And and what what are the real uh, you know distinguishing characteristics? I mean, it feels like you're up in Alaska or something like that when you when you get north. So it's got some really alpine specific vegetation and characteristics that are really important for us to preserve. It's pretty steep as we're going up, but then you can kind of start to see where it's leveling out. And that's the plateau part that there's a sudden drop off. So it would be really great if the forest could make a boundary before it suddenly drops off because there are uh, risks to people pushing to the very edge. That's what it really looks like to me here. We're climbing up. Thank goodness we're getting the updraft, not the downdraft. But look at this incredible plateau and then it's really steep on those sides. This is great too, because we're also getting to see how wind blowing it is. So although there's all this terrain, we also would like to encourage the forest to find the terrain that is actually covered with snow most of the, most of the season, rather than just opening everything. I know there's the Beartooth Wilderness, and then there's an area, what, what do you call it, the High Lakes Study yeah. Area, Wilderness Study Area. So talk about that because they, you know, it all looks the same up here or pretty close. The High Lakes Wilderness Study Area was designated in 1984, and the Congress has, and the forest have yet to determine whether they want to make it wilderness or not wilderness. But when it was designated the WSA, it was, to the manner and degree of snowmobiling use happening in 1984. 36 years later, technology has evolved tremendously. So people are able to push the boundaries of where they're snowmobiling and taking various machinery because of that. Right here is a great example of the wind blowing and how that might look like a great snowmobiling area, but it isn't fully covered with snow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When they made those laws back then, the uh, snowmobiles were a whole different breed. Equipment can get to places never before thought of and uh, certainly a lot more, a lot quieter. There's a whole difference, so it needs to be evaluated, I guess. How do you, how do you guys look at that and, and how does that affect the uh, wildlife and uh, all that kind of stuff? There's still a lot of room for research in how the over snow use impacts wildlife that is subterrane. However, in the springtime, that's when we're noticing the most potential for conflict because as the snow is starting to melt quickly, grizzly bears are emerging from their dens and moving around, birds are starting to move back, and all of those things are impacted by sound and um, people moving around. Also, with the quick snow melt that happens in the springtime, the, the alpine vegetation is becomes more susceptible to impacts. One of the other concerns with a, a Beartooth Plateau is that it does, there is part of the Absorca Beartooth Wilderness also. And just this February, there was a trespass into the wilderness and eight snowmobilers had to be rescued from Granite Lake, which is over a mile in, into the wilderness boundary. So there really is a need to address this sooner than later. One of the things that we're also asking the forest to consider is to make bookends for the season of snowmobiling from December 1st to April 30th. And the reason for that is in the springtime, the snow really melts quickly, but also the Beartooth Highway is plowed and it 
creates better access for backcountry skiers to explore the area. And one of the conflicts that often happens is like the Gardner Headwall is famous worldwide for backcountry skiers. And there have been some close calls with snowmobilers um, who have started to snowmobile up there. And a skier can come down a hill with a snowmobiler going up to do a high marking. And it just makes it pretty unsafe. This is incredible. I mean, it's just so spectacular looking at the relief. Who, who are, who's going to make some of these decisions? And I'm curious to, to know if they're sympathetic to this or, or there's different factions like there are everywhere. The decision makers are the, is the forest supervisor uh, for the Shoshone National Forest. If you look out the window here, you can really see the contrast between where there's snow, where it's really steep, and there is even a proposal of a trail to go down this area that doesn't seem like it has a lot of snow. And so the, it's going to be important for the forest to really evaluate this with a hands or on the ground look in order to make appropriate decisions and to see where it makes sense for wintertime boundaries. So this flight is really an excellent opportunity for that. Is it controversial? It's always hard to take away area that you that you feel you have to snowmobile, even if it's area that's not really practical for snowmobiling. It's that shrinkage that people have a hard time with. So it's definitely a difficult decision and conversation because we're we are really talking about shrinking it to a manageable size that is enforceable, has sufficient snow, and is also amenable to over, over snow recreation. When you look at this, how remote this place is, and uh, and you mentioned that uh, that rescue, you know, it, it just shows that it's a that there are conflicts and people are not really abiding by the rules, and that's to me what I think really needs to be done more than anything. That is definitely a huge concern. Is that there is a lot of violations and we're only hearing about the ones that have to be rescued, but how many other violations and trespasses into the wilderness area are happening that we don't know about. And in this vast area, there is the Sawtooth Peat Bed Special Interest Area and the Lime Creek Research Natural Area, as well as the Wilderness Study Area. And those other two areas have special vegetation and special um, qualities that are used for research and study. And those, we don't know what the impact of snowmobile use is over a long time on that. And especially in the springtime, when those areas could be heavily impacted because of the snow melt is so quick. Jen, this has been really spectacular. I, I've spent time up here, but never never uh, with somebody that knows this area. and. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious to go, what can, is there anything that people can do? Um, is there places for comments? What, what if anything, can people do that to help uh, keep this place in good balance and, and as spectacular as ever? The Shoshone National Forest is actually working on the travel management plan now. A lot of us have submitted comments previously and we are waiting for their next release of evolution of the plan. And during that time, there'll be more opportunity for public comment. But certainly it's important for people, if they're interested or passionate about this, to continue to reach out to their local district rangers and encourage them or talk to them about their concerns with this. But looking out here, you can see how there's the terrain sort of establishes a boundary. And in the map that we presented to the forest, we were really trying to highlight those natural boundaries that exist so that it can be easier for people who are coming from Minnesota or Wisconsin, that they'll be able to know where those boundaries are. We're looking out right now and we can see the wild, the first wild and scenic river designated in Wyoming, which is the Clark's Fork River. And it's the only wild and scenic river in the Shoshone National Forest. So you can see a lot of the snow melt is going to end up in that river. So you can see the road down there and the road goes from 
the Chief Joseph Highway all the way down to Red Lodge. But in the winter, the snowmobilers will park on by the Chief Joseph Highway and they drive up the road and then they'll venture off onto this plateau where they can go. So the road is a great marker for the north side of the road is where the wilderness study area is. And the south side is not the wilderness study area. That, and it's not wilderness either. So this coalition of partners, it has been Greater Yellowstone Coalition, the Winter Wildlands Alliance, the Wyoming Wilderness Association, the Wilderness Society, and Sierra Club Wyoming Chapter have all really worked together to create some, to propose a balanced option for the forest as it looks at its winter travel management plan and creates a good boundary for non-motorized and protecting our wilderness areas and ensuring uh, that there's still access for non-motorized users.